Hello, everyone. Um, I'm presenting my capstone project, uh, as Alex mentioned. And I'd like to start my speech with the quote by Mark Weiser that says, the best technology is the one that disappears. And by this, he means that nature is the best engineer. And through looking for inspiration in nature, we can create smart designs. Uh, so first of all, what are microgreens? Microgreens are young and edible greens harvested at an early age of growth. Uh, and they are packed with nutrients such as vitamin C, vitamin E, ca calcium, magnesium, beta carotene. Uh, and they are shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular problems, type 2 diabetes, the chance of obesity. So um, due to their interesting flavor as well as their health benefits, they are widely used in medical and culinary fields. Uh, so before reaching maturity, uh, microgreens go to, uh, through two stages, germination, uh, which lasts from three to five days. Uh, it requires on average 22 degrees Celsius optimal temperature and 60% relative humidity. During the growth period, which lasts from seven to eight days, uh, the greens require 23 degree um, optimal temperature and 50% relative humidity. Uh, this picture depicts the uh, growing stage of microgreens from the seed to the mature plant. Um, so vertical greenhouses are a vertically st stacked st uh, structure that optimizes space and is widely used in urban areas. Uh, there are three main types of um, um, vertical greenhouses. The first one is hydroponic greenhouse, which substitutes the soil to um, more, a more water efficient substrate, such as a coconut curd or silicone, um, and therefore requires a bit less water than the soil. Aquaponic greenhouse sli is slightly more water efficient because it combines the cultivation of fish and plants um, and nurtures the plants with the water waste gathered from the fish ponds. And finally, aeroponic greenhouse developed by NASA, uh, which um, uh, uses 90% less water, uh, is uh, delivering the moisture to water not by a th through soil or a substrate, but purely through air vapor. In this project, uh, an aeroponic greenhouse is going is selected. So the co the goal of the project uh, was to create a prototype of a sustainable, water efficient, automated aeroponic microgreen greenhouse, which would operate with an ultrasonic fogger. Uh, we set the following requirements um, for uh, ensuring plant growth. First, uh, we, need to, we needed to ensure optimal um, consistent modes for germination and growth, uh, provide correct and adjustable watering, lighting and air circulation system uh, because we know that seeds are different and uh, some seeds require more moisture uh, whereas less uh, some require less. Uh, we needed some monitoring systems to uh, measure the humidity uh, and the temperature and display it to the user. Uh, have a backup uh, water pumping and power source in case of any emergencies uh, in order to not lose the crop. Uh, and also uh, the system needs to be easily manageable through Google Calendar and Google Sheets so that the presence of the person growing the plants um, is not required in the building. Uh, and also it needs to include reminders and notifications in order to uh, ensure that the plants are harvested in the correct time. Uh, so these are the four main systems that are going to ensure those goals. Um, first um, is the water, um, watering system. Uh, so we took a food storage container um, specifically made from po polypropylene material because it is uh, used for storing edible products. Um, it needed to be black uh, so that it doesn't have high um, light exposure. Um, and the way we use it is that we uh, put water in the storage container and we put the lid on top. The lid, a lid has uh, small holes um, all over it so that uh, when we lay uh, the seeds, um, they can take the moisture from the below. Um, and 
uh, the moisture is going to be generated by the ultrasonic fogger, uh, which needs a 24 volt input. Um, it um, evaporates 300 milliliters of water per hour, and it uh, works uh, when the water level above it is from four to seven centimeters. Uh, whenever the water level reduces from that, uh, uh, through the ultrasonic sensor inside it, um, stops it from working. Next is the racking system. As we already saw, the food storage lid uh, with the holes. And also uh, to catch the seeds and ensure that they do not fall onto the water, uh, an additional layer of mesh is put on top of the lid. Uh, and the enclosure lid is uh, used only during the germination process uh, in order to lock in the moisture and ensure the germination uh, stage. Uh, for lighting and ensuring photosynthesis, um, a mix of uh, LED strips is used, 88% 4200 Kelvin and 12% 660 nanometers, which is shown uh, to be the best option for uh, growing microgreens. And finally, the airflow system which is currently the only addition to the climate control system because uh, the uh, greenhouse is located inside the house uh, and the temperature control is done through uh, the temperature control of the house. Um, <coughs> the main requirement for the fan is uh, that it needs to be waterproof because we're working with a high uh, humidity level. Here is the simplified version of the system interconnection. So we have five um, operating uh, devices, the fan, the fogger, the buzzer, LED, and uh, the pump. Uh, so the fogger is connected to the ESP8266. Uh, and in order to um, ensure uh, that it's working, I'm sorry. Um, in order to ensure uh, when it is working and when it does not, we also connect uh, the uh, transistor, uh, transistor of the fogger into the uh, analog pin A0 of the controller. I'll uh, explain this further. Uh, the pump, uh, the fan, um, and the buzzer all require uh, 12 volts of um, voltage, and the fogger and the LED require 24, uh, which is why we use a 24 volt um, power source and also a DC to DC 12 volt adapter. Uh, next, our monitoring devices are the LCD display and the DHT sensor, which both require fi 5 volts of um, voltage. Um, and the DHT sensor is a sensor that um, measures the humidity and temperature. Here is the schematic diagram. You can see the connections of the fogger, the pump, fan, the DHT, and the LED, as well as the buzzer. Uh, so let's talk about the main component of this greenhouse, which is the fogger. So uh, it is very important that the, the fogger delivers water consistently. And in any case, uh, when the water level reduces from four centimeters inside the tank, um, well we, uh, as I already mentioned, we uh, use the A0 pin to measure um, whenever it's off. Uh, so according to Ohm's law, uh, when it's working, uh, it has one ampere of current. Um, and uh, the A0 is connected through a uh, resistor, uh, which has a resistance of 0 0.39 ohm. And by um, making a logical question that uh, logical question that tests if the voltage in the uh, analog pin A0 is less than 0 0.18, we can test if the fogger is working or not. So in, in case uh, when it's less than 0 0.18, it um, sends the signal uh, to the pump to start working for 30 seconds. And during those 30 seconds, uh, the pump is uh, um, calculated to um, uh, bring the water level to our desired water level. But in any case, if uh, the water inside the reservoir is also finished um, and the fogger does not work the second time, uh, the system uh, shuts down and it uh, displays, I need water for the user and starts buzzing. And the user needs to go to the site, reset the system, pour the water in order to restart the um, greenhouse. The monitoring is done through uh, interconnected Google Calendar and Google Sheets. 
so these two are connected through an app script with a unique deployment ID. First, before setting up the system, the user um, uh, includes the data that they want inside the sheet. For example, the uh, this column is responsible for the duration of the fogger during the germination process and the duration when the fogger is off. Here uh, are the intervals when the fogger is on, off during the uh, growth period and also when the fan turns on and off during the mm, growth period. So every three minutes the ESP8266 um, um, controller which is connected to the Wi-Fi requests a five uh, uh, an int a code with five um, numbers, integer numbers from the Google spreadsheet. The Google spreadsheet then interconnects to the Google calendar and um, checks uh, which mode is activated or which is going to be either germination, growth or harvest. Uh, the as we know, uh, the fifth uh, integer is re uh, responsible for sending the harvest signal. Um, in the, um, I've, I've prepared a video to explain this process a bit better. Uh, so here is our result that we cultivated. Uh, and I'd like to show this video that demonstrates um, how the system works. One second. So as we can see, the user checks the data inside the Google Sheet. It goes to the app script, which has the code written in JavaScript to connect to the Google Calendar. He then deploys the code. And as we can see, here is the five digit code that is generated um, from the uh, Google Calendar and the Google Sheet. So it says 44000. Then uh, the germination period ends and the growth period starts. during which the Google Sheet uh, sends a different code for the controller to activate um, uh, the fan as well as the fogger. And the harvest is uh, used uh, mainly for reminding the user through Google Calendar when the event is due and it always generates the same co code, which is four digits zero and one. And during that time, it uh, gets the command to only display the LCD and uh, turn off the remaining devices. Here it shows uh, the case when water level is below the four centimeters. And here it shows the case when there's no water inside the reservoir. The water flow stops because there's no water left here it turns on the LCD and displays, I need water. After the water installation, we reset the system and it's ready. That was it, <laughs> thank you. On the uh, on the Fogger page, A zero is analog input zero pin yes. zero. Okay, Cause that also means address zero. It's uh, someone would probably ask you about that. That's okay. It's just anyway, whatever. Um, second one is um, 
I, I noticed not just you, but like I think last year, someone used like these Google Sheets. Why do you guys want to use Google Sheets? Just have everything locally. I know it's sort of cool, but you know, I'm just wondering, just keep it local in the machine. I think for people that already use Google Sheets and Google Docs for like um, their jobs and like for managing their schedule, it's easier for them to also see that inside. Yeah, and I, uh, Maybe Google goes down. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, the world goes down. <laughs> 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 okay. In in your paper, you have uh, done an economic uh, calculation, and uh, also uh, I, I've seen. Uh, some analysis about market in Armenia, imported machinery, etc. Yes. But uh, I'm personally aware of a company in Armenia that does automatic greenhouses for ex especially microgreen uh, production. Have you uh, been in touch with them? Have you been, or you maybe need an introduction to them uh, for your product to be uh, uh, industrialized? Yeah. Are uh, you aware of them? In the first yes, place? I am aware. Um, there, there are many, both automated and non-automated um, manufacturers. Uh, but I think this concept um, uh, of using the fogger uh, for um, watering the system is new. Um, and I think this uh, cell that um, you that is that is used that that's used. Uh, is more for home conditions for people that are using it as a hobby um, for, it for it to develop and then uh, when it starts generating more revenue that is when uh, I think it is beneficial to start introducing to the um, businesses and like bigger competitors. In this My case... General, general advice would be to all of engineering students but when you're doing a development of a uh, product or project you should immediately start thinking about industrializing it otherwise yes. it, it will be it, it will stay as a hobby <laughs> okay <laughs> nice uh, thank you for the presentation um, thank you. A very quick question. From engineering perspective, what do you think is the forest automation you can go with your project? Like, let's, um, as, as already you've got the question regarding the Google Sheets, right? So what if you have totally and fully automated a feedback-based <coughs> automation, like using measuring? So you already have the sensors that are measuring the humidity. You can measure the light intensity. You can probably measure also the growth, like using yes. different sensors. So did you thought about going yes. further I and more extreme automation? I've definitely thought about it um, in the first stages. Uh, I also included the idea of uh, also harvesting the plants automatically, which would be done by a blade running through the uh, grains. Uh, however, um, during this stage, uh, we were able to achieve this um, result, but that is not the end to this project, as uh, Ms. Satanik mentioned. I'm thinking about creating uh, a business from this, uh, and therefore it will require more automations uh, in that perspective. And also the temperature control and humidity control also would be more advanced, since we will start industrializing it instead of keeping it in a room for hobby purposes. Yeah, one more question regarding the uh, industrializing. Um, have you researched about the impact of greenhouses for yes. the ecology? Yes. Because that's now becoming an issue globally. Yes, first of all, when we hear green, we think everything is good, uh, but we don't consider the water waste and the waste generated from the substrates as well, which is why, um, 
during my research, I switched from hydroponic greenhouses into aeroponic greenhouses because I saw the potential of making it even more uh, sustainable. So uh, all these mm, healthy substrates that we use, uh, the way that they're manufactured are not that good for the environment, although the pr product is not bad. Uh, so mm, therefore, it's better to, like in my project, it's better to make more effort to make it even more sustainable uh, because we are all responsible for the future of our green planet.